So we are now here at the MOOC online course of natural resource management and uh, today we will be discussing integrated natural resources management which is popularly known as INRM. So let us first know about this INRM. What is INRM? Integrated natural resource management basically it is a very conscious process of incorporating multiple aspects of natural resource use into a system for the sustainable management to meet our requirement, our demand. We have already discussed uh, various aspects of NRM and we also discussed that what are the challenges that NRM face and then also we discussed about the various tools and technologies. We have also discussed in great detail about participatory rural appraisal, rapid rural appraisal, how actually we use the various tools for evaluating the natural resources in an area. Now, INRM provides us an opportunity to manage this natural resource base in a sustainable manner. Now, let us see that what are the various aspects of INRM, Integrated Natural Resource Management. Integrated Natural Resource Management, it offers a way of doing the development oriented research which aims to simultaneously reduce the poverty, food insecurity and at the same time also tries to achieve the environmental protection. So, in a sense, we try through INRM to take care of our life in a sustainable manner where we will have enhanced production, agricultural production, we will have enhanced livelihood but on the other hand, we will also take care of the environment. That is the essence of INRM. INRM, it is an emerging concept which is uh, best understood as the responsible and broad based management of land, water, forest, various biological resource bases including genes because biodiversity already we know we have discussed that how important it is as a natural resources for you know human civilizations and for that matter the entire ecosystem. These are all needed to sustain the agricultural productivity and also to avert the degradation of the potential product that actually we are trying to get out of the system. INRM also focuses on ecosystems rather than commodities because it is quite natural. If we focus suppose on a product or on a commodities, then probably a point will come when we may unknowingly neglect the ecosystem, the surrounding environment. We must never forget that resources which are being utilized for the production of various product and commodities are basically the gift of the nature, the ecosystem. So, we must understand the underlying process in an any ecosystem, both biophysical and socio-economic. So, we first try to understand the relationships between these two very important component and how they are interlinked rather than just looking at very simple relationships between A to B or component of, of an ecosystem, we must look at the picture as a whole and then only INRM, Integrated Natural Resource Management will actually stand as it means. INRM, remember is also responsible and it is a very broad based you know management of various resources like land, water, plant, forest and different biological resources and it focuses on the sustainable aspect of natural resource management. So, in one hand when it helps to enhance the productivity or the other hand it also take care of the nature on the ecosystem and these entire process need to be carried out by the community and well guided by agricultural scientist, different experts from non-government organization, government organization, trained personnel who knows how to carry out this integrated natural resource management. In turn, they should also train the community. At the end of a day, as we discussed earlier, that community who actually are there among this ecosystem, they need to learn how to take care of the natural resources that they are going to use for their well-being. I will now slowly go one by one aspect 
and also take one resources at a time and would try to explain to you that how the concept of integrated natural resource management can be applied. Let us take first integrated water resources management which is known as IWRM. IWRM it is a process which actually encourages a kind of a holistic or coordinated development of water resources but in conjunction with land and also other resources because water is linked to almost all other resources, natural resources. So, to get the maximum benefit of out of water and also to be able to manage the water resources as the best possible way is to have a coordinated approach. So, that the resultant, the result of this effort will be socially and economically equitable in nature without compromising the sustainability of the ecosystem. IWRM is supported by water resources professional and various other you know individuals and organizations across the world and of course within a country. So, these all organizations and individuals they actually come together and work towards IWRM. The scale of this uh, particular approach is basically in basin scale that means river, lake or ground water largely being taken care of under IWRM. Now, the next uh, aspect that I will talk about is integrated coastal zone management. Briefly it is known as ICZM integrated coastal zone management. What it does is the process of combining the all aspects of human, physical and biological aspect of the coastal zone in particular within a single uh, framework. Suppose you take the example of the coast in Tamil Nadu or coastal area in, in Gujarat and elsewhere. So, what you have to do is that first is the, the zonation has to be clear. Once you know the zone within that coastal area, then we need to focus on that and then try to bring various you know aspects of ICZM which again is nothing but the sustainable management of the resources which is available within that coastal zone and the associated livelihood activities and well-being of the people will be taken care of. So, again like IWRM here in ICZM also we need help assistance from technical person. Time and again for all the approach I am mentioning one thing kindly note is that we need some well trained experts in each of the field. Often it happens is that people take it little you know easily because some of the aspects of these uh, approaches already people are doing. So, they think that okay, it is it is very easy to carry out, but there are certain subtle aspect of these management practices which requires the presence, the assistance, the guidance from trained personnel. So, here in for ICJDM, we need the support from marine scientists, coastal zone management experts, uh, then biodiversity experts. So, like that and these all those things these people will again like IWRM will try to work together and finally, train the community which are there in the coastal area. Especially the coastal at all coastal and upland areas, the uses of the coastal water, the resources there in the coastal regions is basically is that that they actually are important for maintaining the environment of that area. So, the focus would be that how to manage those coastal region resources in a very, very sustainable manner. So, that the people residing there in the coastal zone should be able to carry out their regular livelihood activities, but at the same time the delicate ecosystem of coastal zone should also be taken care of. Next, I will discuss about ecosystem approach. Many of you might have heard about this approach. Ecosystem approach basically it is a strategy, it is a strategy for the integrated management of all the components of land, 
water of the ecosystem, living resources that actually promotes the conservation and sustainable use in a equitable manner. I am sure that you might be you know observing that the word equitable is coming quite frequently. The resources which are actually given by nature, the issue of equitable share of that resources is very critical in today's world. So, in any society or community, ideally the equitable distribution of resources is critical for a perfect sustainable development of that particular area. So, if from the very beginning this particular aspect of equitable sharing of resources is taken care of, then you will find that in the journey of natural resource management and then actual the development of an area, you will find that you will get most of the time success, probably very few times a failure. So, the equitable sharing aspect we need to keep in, in mind, which I tell you that may not be a very easy exercise when you actually go and work on the ground, but we need to ensure it to the best of our capacity. Second, ecosystem approach again need the support and you know facilitation from ecologist, international bodies such as CBD convention on biological diversity, various international, national and local level organization. Presently, there is also lot of enthusiasm among the you know private sector to come you know uh, to join hands with public sectors and different organization at grassroots level as well as you know uh, the government level to go for ecosystem approach. Because in the world of climate change, now ecosystem approach is one important path that people increasingly understanding that that could actually help us to make this world a sustainable one. So, especially the ecosystem approach in case of ecosystem approach you will find the area are distributed within the functioning limit of an ecosystem like any other previous that uh, ecosystem like coastal and water that I have talked about. Now, let us come to another important you know natural resource that is forest, forest landscape restoration. Lot of uh, debates, lot of efforts you know are going on for increasing or at least maintaining uh, the proper forest uh, coverage in country in India and also I am sure that same thing is happening uh, in other parts of the world. So, forest landscape restoration is a process that aims to regain the ecological integrity and enhance human well-being in a deforested or degraded forest landscape. Meaning that this approach forest landscape restoration, it provides a scope opportunity to convert a degraded land into a forested land. So, that means you basically you know take care of the sustainability of an area, you also enhance the possibility of resources or enhancement of livelihood when you convert a degraded land into a forested land. Now, what kind of in this approach, what kind of uh, professional help or assistance that uh, may be important? Certainly, the foresters would be of great use international bodies such as global partnership on forest landscape restorations are actively involved for this approach. What is the scale involved for this approach? If you look at that the specially it works in landscape scale most of the time. So, having said that you will see that recent time India is doing reasonably good in maintaining the forest area. You know some parts of India we need little bit extra effort, but overall we are trying our best to maintain the required percentage cover area of forest. We of course need to do a bit more to keep it in a much better condition. Now, if you look at the assets of INRM integrated natural resource management, a very critical slide. So, I would seek your you know full attention for this particular slide. If you look at that, uh, uh, there are five capital assets that integrated natural resource management has. First one is natural, second physical assets, third human asset, fourth financial asset 
and the last is social asset. So these five assets basically allows one to carry out the integrated natural resource management practices in a meaningful manner. So let us see that what are these assets, five assets and how actually they work. First, let us take natural assets. In natural assets, we basically take talk about soil fertility, water resources, forest resources, land quantity means amount of area, quality, minerals. So these are the things, resources which come under natural assets of INRM approach. When you talk about physical asset of INRM, what we actually mean? We mean household assets. We mean agricultural implements like plow, then tractor, cedar, harvester. We mean infrastructure, grain storage, coal storage, plantations. So these are basically the physical assets within INRM approach. Now let us come to human assets. So from the name itself, it is very clear that when you talk about human resources, human assets, we actually mean human resources. That means the knowledge, the skill, the fitness and the availability of individual for maintaining this natural resource base. So in a sense, human asset means it has to do something with human, individual or group. Next asset comes is financial, very important. Here, of course, we talk about, you know, the livelihood, the earnings basically, the credit, the savings, loan, remittances. So anything which is uh, related with finance money is actually under financial assets within INRM. Lastly is the social asset. The most important one in case of the success of INRM is largely associated, all are important, but if your social dynamic, social fabric, if it is not taken care of, and if it has to happen within some rules, relationship of trust, mutual trust is very, very important of uh, having a success for integrated natural resource management. Mutuality of interest. In a community, we can only be successful and we can have proper growth in an area only when we actually take care of almost everybody's interest. It cannot be just one person's interest in a village, then definitely it will not be sustainable. Leadership, critically important for INNM approach, keen and ethnic network, social organization, you know, self-help group, community interactions, all those things actually come under social assets within INRM framework. So your INRM integrated natural resource management approach, the ingredients for its success lie on these five asset. So whenever we you know go with INRM approach, please note that we need to ensure that these five assets are present with us. And that's the right time to initiate the INRM approach in any area. Now, few key intervention that I would like to discuss here. Key intervention of integrated natural resource management, which we could think of. First is, of course, capacity building and training. That's the most important, you know, starting point. Water security intervention, land resources development, catchment area protection, agricultural extension services, now climate resilient agriculture or sometime we also call it as climate smart agriculture, CSA. Then energy security intervention. So these are basically the key interventions of INNM. INNM when will be initiated in an area, basically we will be looking at these, you know, sets of intervention in an area. Now, if you look at that, what are the different, so I will go uh, basically few of these key intervention I will take and explain to you that how actually INRM can go ahead. So let us take water security intervention. So water security intervention, what actually we could do under INRM? Of course, we need to take care of catchment area treatment and its management. 
So catchment area, I am sure that all of you understand it. So we will discuss catchment area once again in great detail when we will discuss about watershed management in one of the lecture in maybe next one or next to next one. So catchment area treatment and management X actually take care of soil and water conservation different measures and we do it for rejuvenating the water in an area. Then comes water security interventions like water lifting devices installation such as electrical or solar pump. Solar pump is becoming now very popular in many places in India. Irrigation, yes, we already have a strong network of irrigation canal, reservoir tanks or many other, you know, way that uh, water security intervention can take place under INRM. But one more important thing that, uh, as I said, that the beginning of INRM, it starts with capacity building and training. So the capacity building and training is to, as you understand from the term itself, to enhance the people's skill. And this actually could include a kind of a training on and skill development by, you know, external expert or you developed the village people or village youth uh, also as, you know, a trainer. So we call it training of trainees. So they can be trained in various domains such as social mobilization, bookkeeping, catchment area development, various kind of skill development, uh, project management. So these all capacity building and training uh, should be the first, first step of INRM approach. So within also this uh, water security intervention, we could also uh, take care of soil erosion, which is a major problem in many parts of our country. Soil erosion can take place in various way through wind, through water. We, we know that there are various types of erosion can take place. So there are various ways again to take care of soil erosion. I will be discussing great detail in the coming uh, lectures. Staggered terraces, construction, plantation, pasture development, you know, you can use of wear or lose boulder check dam, RCC check dam, gamian structure, there are various engineering structures also can be put in for prevention of soil erosion. At domestic level, we can go for, you know, tube oil, dug well, small storage tank, pond, rainwater harvesting, we can go for, you know, water conservation practices also at household level, small lifting devices also can be installed. Treatment of contaminated water, especially, you know, in mining areas using open lime channel technology, which we call OLCT is getting lot of, you know, attention these days. There are various other technologies also are available at uh, domestic level. But the best uh, way to look at the domestic level is to utilize the resources or processes that are available within that particular community. This is not only uh, cost effective, but also people may not need much training or much awareness because they are already living with this kind of techniques or this kind of uh, instruments or machines within that particular community. So local use of local knowledge is critical for INRM at the domestic level. Let us now look at another important uh, resource uh, development or management and that is land resource development. So again erosion, we just mentioned in the previous case. So controlling soil erosion is a challenge and we discussed that what are the different ways can be carried out. Reclamation of degraded land by various means by afforestation or by um, growing, cultivating medicinal, aromatic plant, tree plantation, various ways that you can actually basically take care of the degraded land. And if you can convert as I discussed in the previous slide from degraded it to a forest line, certainly you are going to enhance not only the natural resource base, betterment of ecosystem, but also possibility of enhancement of livelihood. Other activities can be, you know, terracing, construction of dug out wells and ponds, rainfall and surface runoff can be reduced by different kind of structures that we already discussed in the previous slide. Next comes your catchment area protection. 
a very, very important and uh, this particular aspect we will be discussing in great detail when we talk about water set management. So, catchment protection and conservation is critical for not only water resources management, but also for soil or land resource management. So, afforestation, nursery, horticulture development, soil and water conservation uh, activities like contour trenches, stragger trenches, soak pits, gully plugs, recharge pits research shafts, there are various technologies. So, these can be utilized again, these all those things uh, I will be discussing, you know, in watershed management lecture. Agricultural extension service, the next uh, important aspect of INRM. Establishment of a good network of extension services is critical for any kind of initiative and so for INRM. So, these days uh, there are also a lot of uh, initiatives are going on for establishing custom hiring centers. What is those? Because these provide actually fee based kind of custom hiring. So, you pay a little bit and you get a tools or machines or farm machinery a reasonable charge. Uh, so, in that case you may not require to buy a costly uh, implements and especially these days some of the farmers you know they prefer to grow crops in one season the other season they prefer to work something else for them it could be a very good options uh, to hire the required machineries and other aspects that are required for the agriculture practices. Then addressing the issues and challenges for small and marginal farmers over the you know the shortage of labor, cost of cultivation practices and then to improve the overall agricultural operation by providing advanced knowledge of agricultural practices and common facilities through these custom hiring centers can also you know increase the uh, success of INRM. Use of different agricultural tools like these are the tools which uh, also can be used for efficient management of natural resources. Now, let us come to climate resilient agriculture or climate smart agriculture. So, demonstration of climate resilient agriculture can be carried out uh, by selecting few you know model villages and uh, then you know train the farmers that how to carry out this uh, climate resilient agricultural practices. To make the uh, farmers to be able to carry out these things there is a significant amount of training is required by expert personnel. So, that needs to be also taken care of. Application of high end technologies like modeling, simulation, remote sensing, precision farming technologies can also be used for climate smart agriculture. The benefit of technology now has to reach at the ground for the farmers. So, that, that is one thing that under uh, you know integrated natural resource management we need to ensure. Energy security intervention, any activity that you carry at the field level demands some amount of energy and energy also energy production also has a link with climate and climate change. So, it is very important for INRM to look at the energy security intervention or options very carefully. Energy efficient stoves. Now, there are lot of institutes in India, they are coming out with energy efficient stoves, energy efficient burners. In our IIT Guwahati, some of the uh, labs, faculty and students, they, they have worked on this also. So, cooking stoves, efficient burners, they are basically what it does that it reduce the requirement of energy or rather I would say that it actually promotes efficient cooking. So, utilizing less energy for more outcome. Then energy plantation is another aspect which is going on across the country and, and world and you may be well aware of different uh, you know energy plantation. So, fuel wood uh, is in some cases is also you know important, but energy plantation one in thing we have to keep in mind, it should not be carried out at the cost of you know agricultural food crops or valuable agricultural crops. So, that has to be also taken care of. Eco-friendly technology, of course, we need to promote the technologies 
which are in sync with ecosystem, sustainable ecosystem. So, any technology which has a chance of damaging the, our ecosystem, we need to really be concerned and we should take care of that, fix that or we need to bring in certain uh, technology like solar based technologies, biogas based technologies for eco-friendly management of system. So, these are few important uh, aspects under INNM that we can think of to do it in appropriate manner. Now, INNM resource uh, research process, you know, uh, there is a framework which actually can be utilized for appropriate uh, management of this INRM activity. So, what are the research process framework that we should be actually aware of? So, first is that focuses on key causal elements means what are the main reasons for crisis of natural resource management is happening. So, find out those reasons first integrates the levels of analysis at every level whatever analysis we are carrying out try to integrate them try to find out that how best that uh, this integration of different analysis can actually promote the sustainable uh, management of natural resource management, then merges the disciplinary perspectives into INRM, very critical. When I say disciplinary perspective means engineering, sciences, then uh, social sciences, all those uh, disciplines actually should come together and work for the betterment or better um, way of managing natural resource management. INRM actually looks for that. So, we also uh, should be able to make use of the wide range of technologies that are available with us, find out that which are the technologies has less energy requirement or who, which are the energy efficient technology that can be brought in under the umbrella of INRM. It also guides the research on component technologies which actually could generate policy, technological or institutional alternatives as well. Okay. So, INNM and uh, if you see that it the research process framework also could focus on improving the adaptive capacity of each stakeholder. Why? This is to increase the resilience of the agro ecosystem means the people living there, the society, the economic, the financial aspect of that. So, again if you go back and think about those five assets uh, that I just uh, discussed. So, those five assets, human assets, uh, social assets, financial assets, these are so important that every um, moment we need to keep that in mind. If we can keep those five assets in uh, maintaining the natural resource management, we are almost sure that we would be having a successful integrated natural resource management in place. So, training we already discussed that training, capacity building, farmers to farmers learning that is another concept that is being encouraged now. A farmer will learn much, much easier, a much better way from another farmer. So, probably that could be a way that a group of smart farmers can be trained first and then they become the trainers and they will teach another group of farmers and that is the way the process will continue. Finally, that uh, we will talk about INNM research process framework a little bit about that how it actually can work. So, if you see that participatory problem that uh, comes from the community and from the village. So, we need to look at uh, that how actually this problem can be analyzed and then we should look at that the INNM research alternatives to address that particular uh, problem. And to do that, there could be ecosystem functions can be utilized or production function. So, these two can actually help your INRM research on alternatives because those can provide certain solutions to the problems that you have had for a particular community or area. So, these are all are we are doing for human well-being. So, when human comes in picture, there would be certain amount of you know risk involved into that. So, this risk is involved. So, we need to also think about trade offs and options means if we do x then what happen if we do y then what happen. So, 
analysis of trade offs and identification of range of options is very very important for you know overall success of INRM process. The final outcome is that we would actually extrapolate the, the learnings from the field to policy development and policy implementation. So, this policy if it is implemented then again this will finally take care of the problem that we got in hand. From this particular um, level means trade offs and options uh, searching the feedback will be both way. So, it can come from production system to trade offs and from trade offs also the some feedback can go to the production system same way for ecosystem functioning. If you see that in case of production function we are talking about quantity and quality of food and fiber fodder etcetera whereas in ecosystem functions we are talking about nutrient cycling, carbon sequestration, biodiversity, water balance etcetera. So, in a sense INNM research process framework as you see that it works at the community level from where the problems comes in hand, the issues in hand then you actually try to start research or finding out different alternatives, options and to do that you need to look at you know mainly on two different functions one is ecosystem function the other is production function because these are the two are critical one side as I said that your product commodity on the other side is your environment. So, these two things will come in and from there basically we are trying to find out the human well being. Then how to go there then you comes to trade offs options where you weigh your various options and the feedback goes back to the functions both the functions and from here then you get ultimately a result in hand which goes for policy making. Once the policy is formulated then basically it will take care of the problem that came from the ground. So, this is all in overall the integrated natural resource management framework. Mm -hmm.